Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we will start with a clip. Dear one of the last, again one of the last of the Yiddish poets in Israel, explains why he goes on writing songs in Yiddish, although he lives in Israel, where everybody speaks and understands Hebrew, of course. And he tells us about his little sister, Chaya, she didn't have 10 years old yet, and she took care of him and all the other little brothers at home when mother went out to work very early every morning. Little Chaya cooked them and washed them. She only forgot to play games with them. Little Chaya was murdered by a German soldier in Treblinka, and now he the poet Binem Heller is the last man on earth that still remembers her. That's why he goes on writing songs in Yiddish for her, because this was the only language she understood. And maybe, who knows, she is still listening somewhere. <laughs> Mein Schwester Haie mit die schwarze Zett. Die Schwester Haie muss heut nicht erzählen, auf schmutze Gassen Häus mit Kumme drehen. Die Mame ist auf weit von Stube gehen, wenn auf den Himmel hat er schon gelernt. Sie hieß auf weg in Krummer rein, verdient. Das Bied mit Rob mit Gorsche dicke Geld. Und heiß geblieben mit den Brüdern und sie hat sie gekormt und gegeben. Und sie vielleicht singen sie die schönen Lieder von Nacht, wenn kleine Kinder waren nicht. Meine Schwester reihe mit den grünen Ohren mein Schwester Haie mit dem Mangelhaar. Die Schwester Haie muss heute nicht erzeugen, ist noch nicht dort gewinnt, klingt in den Jahren. Sie hat gelang gekocht, gelang das Essen. Sie hat jetzt vor uns die kleine Kepp. Nur spielen sie mit uns und sie vergessen. Die Schwester Reihe mit der schwarze Zeck. Mein Schwester Reihe mit der Eugen Grüne. Ein Deutsch hat in der Blinke sie verbrennt. Und ich bin in der jüdische Medine, der Same letzte Fuss von sie gekennt. Vergiss, schreib ich auf jüdisch meine Lieder. In täglich Schreffe von unserer Zeit Bei Gott allein ist sie ein Bas, ja jede In Himmel sitzt sie bei sein Retter sein Bei ihr schreib ich auf jedisch meine Lieder In täglich Schreffe von unserer Zeit Bei Gott allein ist sie ein Bas, ja jede in Himmel sitzt sie bei der rechten Seite. Okay, I'll turn to it a little bit later. Having an ongoing dialogue with the private and collective uh, consciousness, the remembrance of the Holocaust plays an important role in the shaping of the national, cultural, and moral values of the Israeli society. Our social fabric, composed of different groups, each of them carrying various unique characteristics, requires a delicate balance, which can be achieved by the musical multi multilateral memory of the Holocaust. The Holocaust is a chapter, 
is a, is a chapter of history which is beyond time dimensions. It exposes aspects of human behavior as well as interrelationships of nations, societies, and individuals. All this is reflected in music. Thus, the popular song, which is an integral part of daily life of every household and educational system, should include a repertoire that combines past and future, rational as well as emotional saying, and sophisticated compositions side by side with spontaneous expressions. All this can be identified in Holocaust as well as in post-Holocaust songs. No doubt that the musical repertoire which had uh, survived the war has a very important role in the process of preserving the memory. But here I wish to present the post-Holocaust musical compositions claiming that they carry not only a high degree of com compassion and emotional identification, but they also have a strong impact on our cultural creation and philosophical view. My goal is to describe and to examine the varieties of the music that characterize this repertoire as a reflection of the Israeli society. The music you will hear is partly unknown. It has been largely collected from archives, private collections, recorded interviews, manuscripts, and published, published writings. Analyzing the post-war music, I came to distinguish three categories of songs. The first category. The first category are songs created after the Holocaust by poets, uh, I mean in Israel, yes, mainly in Israel. Songs created after the Holocaust by poets and composers who had survived the war. The phenomenon of composing new songs appears already in the Jewish displaced persons camps we have heard it already during the two days of, uh, of our sessions, all over Europe. Survivors started to reconstruct their lives despite the suffering they had experienced and continued to create, build, and live. Thus, their songs are a synthesis of pain and hope. By presenting their personal stories, they deliver their testimony and reflect the survivors' need to recall and learn the past, but also to hope for a better future. And um, well, we will skip on uh, my first example that I plan to put here. It's the Babi Yar, famous, probably famous song, um, composed in 1951, just to remind us that uh, the Babi Yar um, uh, story appear, uh, slaughter uh, appear, uh, happened on the 29th and 30th of September, uh, 1941. So it's exactly 70 years. Maybe that's the reason why so many times we mentioned yesterday and today, even today the, the um, slaughter of the Babi Yar, 30, more than 33,000 uh, Jews which were slaughtered near Kiev. Uh, composed in uh, 1951, as mentioned by Dries and Boyarsky, it uses a natural minor key, syncopations, sequences, triads, upward skip of an octave, which can be interpreted as a scream, and the repeated pattern of two succeeded uh, descending seconds. Uh, just for example, the C, B, A, a Do, C, La, or B, A, G, and so on. You have it um, in the handouts. It's the first example on page one. I tried some of them to, to mark within the, the score so that it will be easier to follow. Uh, this is one of the sorts. Of, of music. The following example, which we'll hear completely in a minute, the following example by Arye Ben Erez Abramson, 1904 to 1992, is Yiddish Gas, set to a poem by Abraham Sotskover. Both composer and poet are survivors of the Holocaust. Rooted as a halachic Jew, and the heir to a long legacy of cantors and composers, the music of Arye Ben Erez Abramson is set to classical Jewish texts and the poetic works of Yiddish and Hebrew authors. Much of his music was miraculously preserved and is being revised and revived by his daughter, Hannah Abramson, who organizes now concerts of his music with the help of Professor Eliyahu Schleifer, 
and uh, prepares the material for publication with uh, the aid of Professor Batya Hurgin, both musicologists. Uh, and actually, these, uh, these lines that I read now are taken from the concert notes of one of the concerts that Hannah Abramson uh, arranged. Um, we will hear now the whole complete, the complete uh, song, Yiddish Gas, on uh, page two and uh, three. You have the English translation. Uh, we will hear it, of course, in Hebrew, the original language that it had been uh, written and composed. And you will uh, see, you, will, you have here the six stanzas of the text uh, translated in, uh, into English. Please note the, the side, the, the small marks that I have added uh, in the score. It's not the original, it's my uh, analysis, and we'll talk about it in a minute. So please, number two. I'm so 
The distraction, the distraction of the European jury was the source of continuous mourning for Arye Abramson, a mourning that found its utterance in the setting of tec the text by Arye Ab Abramson's cover, the Yiddish poet and partisan a fighter from uh, Ghetto Vilna. Composed in Jerusalem at the age of 80, some 40 years after the war, it engages the listener in a searing expression of pain. The setting, which, which can be classified as an art song, is based on the minor mode, but the tonality is unstable, mainly from measure 66 on. It can be my, uh, A minor, it can be D Dorian, or E Phrygian, which reflects his agitated soul. We can identify here the augmented seconds, as well as the melodic pattern mentioned before, the, 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 the uh, two seconds moving down, uh, C, B, A, uh, F, uh, F, E, D, and uh, so on, repeated once, ag once and, ag and again, and sequences of the same pattern, and the melodic inter interval of a fourth. All these are recurring elements that are very important in the Jewish characteristics. To this category, we have to just to mention, belongs also the music of um, whoever is, uh, knows uh, the music, I, uh, one of the uh, klezmers in Israel, Yom Tov Ehrlich, uh, which was revived by the, another klezmer, Abraham, uh, Abraham Leib Borstein. And on the other hand, there is also a much more optimistic style, composed by survivors in the 50s, where the melody reflects the hopeful text. And here we will hear only a short piece. It's uh, this, this, the pioneer song, Chalutzim Lied, uh, on page one, on the right side of page one. You can see here, uh, marked um, at least one of the rhythmic patterns, uh, just mentioned in, on the lecture before of uh, Dr. Beata. The, the quarter and the, the quarter, the dotted quarter and the uh, the, the eighth note. Um, we will hear maybe just a short piece just to get. <laughs> Here too, uh, we find the natural minor mode, uh, minor, minor mode, minor key, and the sequences. But the triads give us a strong feeling of tonality, a kind of reaching the homeland. Uh, the song is based on a repeated rhythmic pattern, as mentioned before, uh, which functions as a march and a call for action, just as we had before. Also, the upward skips of a sixth and octaves, as, uh, as well as the final note on a much higher register than the opening, have the message of hope and new creativity. This was the first category. The second category is that of entirely new songs with new texts and new melodies. New, new melodies composed by people who have not experienced the Holocaust, although some of them are second generation. Uh, uh, generation. Here too, we can identify in this category two sorts of music. The first is the, the dramatic documentary songs like uh, the two mentioned before, uh, they, uh, they, so they have the, the effect of uh, documentation. Um, and the, such as the following example, 
the text for the, of the following example being written by uh, Rav Chaim Sabato several decades ago after his visit to the Yad Vashem Museum in Jerusalem. This liturgical poem was incorporated into his 2008 historical novel, which was translated into English in 2009 as From the Four Winds. The music was set to the poem in 2009 uh, by the scholar and musician Yehuda Kadari. And we have it here on page four. Again, we will listen only to a small piece of it. translation, we heard the first uh, four, the first stanza, the four lines, and the refrain, the two lines of the refrain. And you can note, you can see that the refrain uh, intentionally poses a question, thus enforcing the emotions that the text arises. Again, the minor key, the augmented second, resembling uh, the Jewish mode, Ahavaraba, uh, Jewish mode, um, which is a kind of scale which is uh, very popular in, um, uh, in the uh, mu uh, music of the, of the, in the synagogue, in um, our liturgical music of the uh, um, Saturdays and, uh, and the holidays. The skips of a uh, fourth, as well as the landing on the notes G, B flat, um, uh, G, B flat, and the D, uh, which is the tonic, the sequences, and the ser series of repeated motives. All these elements appear again, as in the previous pieces, and show us that in spite of 50 or 60 year years of distance, uh, the exclamation of the memory has not changed in this sort of music. But, on the other hand, a more daring style, which is actually a synthesis of sorrow and hope, of conservative Jewish musical elements together with modern elements of dissonances and asymmetrical rhythmic patterns that appear mainly in the instrumental arrangement in uh, this case can be identified in the music of other musicians. Some of them, as mentioned, are second generation. And here we have, we don't have it uh, in the, your handouts, but uh, we will listen to a short uh, excerpt from uh, one of the songs of uh, Yehuda Poliker. He sets his, uh, his one of our famous singers and the uh, composers of light music, and he uh, sets his music to a text by Yaakov Gilad, which is the son of ha uh, Halina Mir uh, Birnbaum, for those who no, the Ghetto Varsha fighters. Uh, he himself, Polyker himself, is half second uh, generation. So we will listen to um, one stanza and the refrain, and you will see that, uh, you will hear that uh, actually this is a song that can be, uh, if we don't know the words, speaking about uh, his mother going back to, um, 
to, to the places where she was during the war, uh, it actually can be a song of uh, a nice weather, a song of ma love, maybe, a song for children, and so on. More, much more optimistic and vivid, please. of the song, uh, the song is called uh, Ashes and uh, Dust and Ashes, and it tells the, actually the, the meaning of the, of the music. Uh, it should be mentioned that the Holocaust is present in many songs uh, today, in many new songs of this style, uh, being written today in Israel, in Israel by young writers, many of them in this uh, light uh, song of jazz style, sort of jazz style. They are written mainly in Hebrew, but we have to know that there are also songs in Ladino and even in Arabic. The third category is that of new post-war music set to texts that had been created during the Holocaust. And therefore, they have a unique uh, documentary uh, value. Uh, what we saw, the piece that we the, the clip or the song that we saw uh, was uh, performed by uh, one of uh, these really famous uh, singers, Chava Alberstein. She is in the, this case, she is also the composer of the song. And as you have heard, the music, the text was uh, written by a survivor of the Holocaust uh, in around the 80s. And in the 90s, it was composed to the music that she uh, sang. Again, a pastoral song and uh, many, many of uh, the songs uh, are composed in this uh, kind of music. We have to mention, uh, we heard this morning uh, the first lecture um, where we had the, um, the, the book of uh, songs uh, from uh, of Reuven uh, Lipschitz. And uh, Johanna, I don't know if you mentioned, uh, if you, you could recognize, Johanna Spector was mentioned there. She was one of the first um, uh, composers, she's a musician, uh, who uh, she didn't uh, experience the war, but she actually be belongs to this category, uh, being uh, uh, composing music to lyrics that had, uh, had been heard in the, this, uh, the uh, displaced persons uh, camps. Maybe the most famous section in this category is the collection of Manfred Lamb. Uh, his tunes set to Gibertic's li lyrics, also mentioned today. Um, Manfred Lamb is not an Israeli, I know. He is a musician and composer from uh, Wuppertal, Germany, 
who composed remarkable music to Gebertig's ghetto poems, trying to catch the mood of Gebertig's lost musical style. You know, uh, only two songs, uh, only music uh, of two songs of Gebertig was uh, uh, survived the war. Because of his contribution to the revival of Gebertig, I wish to mention here shortly two of his settings. One, one is, number six, please, um, you have it. On page five. Uh, on the bottom. Okay. Okay, so uh, I have uh, brought it here uh, because uh, as Leichter, Sinai Leichter says, and I quote, one of the most moving melodies to Gebertig's lyrics, recalling the optimistic mood of Gebertig in the two uh, of his ghetto melo melodies, which uh, were saved. Um, and we have here, we have here really a, a couple of uh, stanzas, all of them, of course, set to the same, uh, to the same uh, music, very much recalling uh, the songs of, uh, the melodies of uh, Gebertig in the ghetto. Uh, another one uh, is the, the song Erev Yom Kippur, which is on the top of the same uh, page. Uh, as you can see, the date, it was composed for the first day of atonement uh, in the ghetto. Uh, I, I brought it here because our day of atonement is Friday evening, this Friday evening. So I felt uh, a certain connection to this, uh, to this repertoire. And uh, he describes the first, uh, maybe we'll hear in a, in a minute, we will hear again only one, uh, one short stanza, uh, describing the first day of atonement since the war uh, broke up. Uh, the music intensifies the, the feelings described in the text, those of fear and oppression, mentioning the Maranos, you will see it in the text, the Maranos in Spain. Thus we feel as if we are really there in person. So. Please, only short, please. Erev Yom Kippur, shoin trieb lach in gas. Die Sun reut vom Busche, zieh efscher vom Kass. Arom er geht's nieder, dem Meire sein Himmel zerbrennt. repeated uh, thank you it is repeated this very short uh, melody is repeated because it imitates the repetitions in the Jewish uh, prayer Jewish cantillation Jewish prayer so um, we have it here uh, uh, and again if you check the musical um, characteristics the musical parameters you find almost the same as in all the other songs um, and these examples, I, th I think that they are very, uh, a very good uh, representation of a uh, word, of a uh, word painting, characteristic, characteristic of this uh, category. Here it uh, expressed the long note, is, it is expressed by the long notes resting only on the tonic, uh, the dissonant seventh skip, and the imitations of prayer uh, as mentioned motive. Um, a word painting plays an important role also in uh, Hannah Brown's prayer, set in 2010, quite a fresh song, uh, by an anonymous murdered Jew. We have it on page six. Uh, and uh, maybe I'll read to you before we hear the music what, uh, what uh, we heard, I heard from her. She writes that uh, the key changes from minor to Jewish Hasidic modes partly also a Havaraba with the augmented second mentioned before, and the melody, uh, uh, the, uh, the melody earns also hints of biblical cantillation. That's what she tried to put in. 
and many repeated notes which resemble prayer tunes. Uh, the, the, the text includes uh, something about martyrdom, and it is expressed by imitating the shofar, the shofar, the blows, the shofar sounds. The greenery is descri described by a vivid melodic pattern. The love of the land uh, and the nation is uttered by the flat scale, clear and sweet, that's according to her. And uh, there is a, even a hint uh, of uh, our national hymn of the Hatikva at the end, and this is a, a trace that uh, we, we find it in many other songs as well. So um, please, we will hear it. Again, you have uh, the prayer, the translation, and we will hear it. Uh, I tried my best putting the text into the, into the, the, the music. Of, the, of our national hymn. On the other side, in the same line of the more modern freestyle stands the song entitled Dream. We don't have the, um, the score here, but we have the text. And again, we will listen only to part of it, number nine, please, the dream. Uh, maybe just a minute. The music is inspired by the joyful text of a diary uh, written by Abramek Kopilevich, born in 1930 in uh, Ghetto Lodge, uh, in 1930, and killed in Ghetto Lodge in 1944. He was 14 years old. We don't know exactly at which age he wrote it, but probably between 12 and 14 uh, years. Uh, here the message is of a childish curiosity, simplicity, and hope. These are achieved by the simple melodic patterns syncopated melodic lines moving upwards and skips that take us to skies and heights. I, I just want to be sure that you got it. The text is by Abraham Kopelovich. The music is by a young Israeli composer who uh, composed it for a group of uh, students uh, to be performed in schools and uh, so on. So we will hear again only one piece, one short piece of it. 
He probably wrote it uh, in Polish. It's translated to Hebrew for the aim of the education system. I'm not sure that it sounds like a Shoah song, isn't it? Um, it is interesting to note that this is the most popular, popular category. Here we find many others like uh, Leibo Levin, Raymond Goldstein and the others who take texts from the Holocaust and uh, set music to this, uh, these lyrics. Uh, also the phenomenon of plural melodies. Um, we, we find a lot of texts that are again and again composed uh, in different styles. Uh, with the same, uh, the same, uh, um, with the same text. Uh, you have here another example, but we will not uh, listen to it. Just to summarize, uh, the musical epic of the Holocaust presented here shares, as mentioned, many common musical parameters. The same intervals that appear in all songs express screams as well as hopes. Uh, the same harmonies in all songs reflect agitation as well as longing. Some of the melodic patterns recall Jewish liturgy, side by side with a strong tendency to compass on Western non-Jewish music, and so on. All this uh, reflects the many-sided creation of post-war modern composers in Israel. The songs recall an insight not only into everyday life, but also an insight into the feelings, emotions, hopes, and dreams. Thus, these songs describe the horrors, but stress also the thirst of life and vitality in the most difficult situations. It seems to me that because of its varied character, the, though based on common musical characteristics, the repertoire presented here, and especially the songs of those people who did not experience the war, as mentioned, categories number two and three, can be used in any interdisciplinary system for as large and varied an audience as possible, contributing to the preservation of the musical heritage while focusing on the historical, social, moral, and religious aspects on one side, but using also new musical devices on the other hand, the rich treasure of post-war songs should be an integral part of every human being's cultural education, who knows that to sing means to exist. Thank you.